I will show you how to measure the size of any object and images accurately using OpenCV and Python. If you're new to my channel, I teach robotics and AI, so subscribe to learn more. So the first step of our process is to do object detection, and I'm going to be taking the phone from our Coco dataset because it's already a recognized object. But if your object is not inside the Coco dataset, what you want to do is go ahead and do some custom training so that your YOLO detector can know what object you're looking at. So Coco is a common object in context, and there's a total of 80 classes. These are all the different objects that are in there, so it's a common type of objects that you'll see from day to day. And these are all of the different indexes that you'll see for different objects. So when you go into the code and look at it, for example, like if I have a hand holding a phone, then it's going to detect two things in this image. So to differentiate it, there's an index here. So 67 is a phone, uh, 0 is a person. So if you have more than one object, you want to differentiate like that, maybe filter out the ones that you don't want. But in our case, we're just going to be dealing with one object. So here you can see we ran our YOLO detector and we found a cell phone. So I just took out that other image with the hand because I want to focus uh, one thing at a time. But one thing to pay attention to is that when you do the, when you take your picture, you want to make sure that your camera is mounted so that everything is going to be perpendicular to the surface. Um, in my case, I just held it by hand, so there's going to be a little bit of inaccuracy as we'll see later. But if you have your phone mounted properly, then it's going to be very good. And you might be wondering why, OK, so Kevin, you have a yellow background and a black phone. Can't you just do traditional methods of like thresholding? Yeah, you can. But I'm trying to generalize it here so that you know if you had objects of different color, you have a background of any kind, it is going to work for you. So that's, that's the main point that I'm trying to shoot for. So to make it even more realistic, what I do is I rotate the object so you can actually find the dimensions of your object at any rotation. So we have the object here, and you can find the corners based on the bounding box. So this will give us our x, y corners at the upper left and bottom right. And then from there, we can actually calculate the centroid. And the centroid, which we'll see later on, will feed into our segmentation model to get the actual uh, surface of our object. So now that we have the centroid, we could feed it into our SAM. And our SAM is going to give us our instance segmentation. So it's going to get the entire contour of our object. So Later on, we could feed that into our PCA to find some of the dimensions of our phone. So for the next step, we're going to find the dimension of our phone in pixels. And the way we're going to do that is using principal component analysis, which is also called PCA. So the idea behind PCA is that you want to find the two primary axes of your object. And in this case, you know, we could just call it some local x and y axes. And because our object is rotated, that's why we want to find the PCA. And this will allow us to find the dimensions. But first off, we're going to do some uh, things to rotate it, depending on how we found our axes. And then after we rotate it, it'll be easier to find the width and height, as we'll see later on. So here you can see on the blue right here, this is our original image. So this is the principal components of the object. And because we know the principal components, we also know the angle of rotation. So what we're going to do is transform it based on the object rotation. And this will give us our green phone, as you can see on the bottom. So after we do this transformation, what we want to do is measure it. So we can measure the width and the height. And you can see we have 472 for the pixels for the width and 960 pixels for the length. And one thing to notice is that because I took my phone uh, picture slightly my camera was probably like slightly tilted because I was holding it with my hand. That's why earlier I said you want to make sure that your phone is perpendicular to your surface. Otherwise, it's going to cause some error. But here you can see the error is a little bit exaggerated here. But what the PCA will do is actually get the greatest length um, because, I mean, the PCA will find the axes. And then I just find the greatest length and width of my pixel contour. Now the final step is to actually figure out the conversion between your pixels and the actual length. So one way you could do this is take an image of a ruler or a caliper, any sort of known object that you have a length for. And in this case, I'm just going to measure my caliper. So we're going to say 100 millimeters equals 629 pixels and use that as our conversion. 
So here you can see this is our code. What we're going to do is run our measure object size, and we're going to call the measure size of object. We're going to pass in our image path, which is phone 4. So I'm going to go ahead and run this, and you can see this work in real time. So after it's done running, you can see that it gives you the length and width of your object based on the image that you feed the program. So here I have 152 millimeters for the length and 75 uh, millimeters for the width. 75.18 to be exact. And you can see this is our true measurement and our measured uh, using camera versus the caliper. You can see that we get an error about 1.75 for the length. And some of the length measurement is due to, again, my camera angle. But you can see the width is an impressive 0.25%. So, I mean, 0.24%. So overall, you can see that the results is very impressive. And if you want my code, it's going to be in a link in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.